you are searching around to see if the Fed is engaged in contractionary or expansionary monetary policy, you won't see any headlines that indicate that the Fed is increasing or decreasing the money supply. Instead, you'll see headlines about interest rates. The Fed doesn't have a particular number in mind when it conducts monetary policy. In fact, it's hard for the Fed to know the exact value of the money supply at any given point in time. What the Fed does know is that changes in the money supply affect short-term interest rates, and so the Fed conducts its monetary policy by targeting short-term interest rates. In recent years, the Fed has set monetary policy by choosing a target for the federal funds rate. So what is the federal funds rate? On any given day, banks with insufficient reserves can borrow from banks with excess reserves. So a bank may find itself short at the end of the day, and remember the Fed has a reserve requirement in place, and so banks can choose to borrow from each other, and as we learned previously, if they're really stuck, they can always go to the discount window to borrow. Well, the interest rate on these loans that banks get from each other is referred to as the federal funds rate. The FOMC, or the Federal Open Market Committee, uses open market operations to target the federal funds rate, and we'll examine how that happens in just a moment. We'll also see that changes in the federal funds rate cause changes in other interest rates and can have a big impact on the economy. So let's take a look at the market for the federal funds rate. In this market, we're measuring the quantity of federal funds on the x-axis and the value of those funds, or the federal funds rate, on the y-axis. The demand for federal funds, that stems from any banks who find themselves short on reserves and may need to borrow funds from other banks. The supply of federal funds, well, that represents any excess funds that banks may be willing to lend to another bank versus some other alternative. The other alternative may be they could have used those excess reserves to create loans, or they may just hold on to those excess reserves as a form of security. The federal funds rate is determined where the demand and supply for federal funds intersect. So in this particular example, we have a federal funds rate of 3.5%. These tend to be really short loans, as short as being just borrowing money overnight. And F1 represents the quantity of these federal funds or these excess reserves that banks are lending and borrowing from each other. To raise the federal funds rate, the Fed will sell government T-bills, or conduct what we know are open market operations, referred to as open market sales. These sales remove reserves from the banking system, reducing the supply of federal funds and causing the federal funds rate to increase. Open market sales we had referred to earlier, we had talked about how it will raise interest rates, and here we see more explicitly that it raises the interest rates not only on any kind of short-term bond, but also here what the Fed is particularly targeting is the federal funds rate. To lower the federal funds rate, what the Fed would do is buy government T-bills. This would increase the supply of federal funds and cause the federal funds rate to fall. So the Fed, what it does is it targets a particular rate and it will do open market sales and purchases to make sure that federal funds rate is met. In this graph, what we'll see is that other interest rates tend to follow the federal funds rate. So here we have roughly a 40-year period of the federal funds rate. As you can see, in more recent times, since the financial crisis, the federal funds rate has been very close to zero. The Fed is trying to encourage banks not to hold on to any excess reserves, but to lend those out. The prime rate is a common short-term interest rate that banks will charge for short-term loans. And as you can see, that prime rate tends to mimic the trend of the federal funds rate. A three-month T-bill, which is just a short-term government bond, also tends to mimic the federal funds rate. But even if we take a look at long-term debt, things like mortgages, mortgages also tend to follow the federal funds rate. So by targeting the federal funds rate, the Fed is able to influence other interest rates in the economy. So if the Fed is concerned about inflation, like we see here in the late 70s and early 80s, it will set a high target for the federal funds rate and conduct the necessary open market sales to push the federal funds rate up. After the financial crisis, as you can see, the Fed was very concerned about the recession that the financial crisis created, and as a result, the Fed set a very low federal funds rate target, and in order to achieve that target, what the Fed had to do was do a lot of open market purchases.